All right, guys, so today's lesson is about George Washington. Obviously, we know him as our general in the Revolutionary War. Um, he's helped us create our Constitution in the Constitutional Committee. And now we're going to talk about him as our first president of the United States. Some of the most important things that we need to talk about in this PowerPoint is the big idea. The big idea is Washington set the standard for all the presidents to follow. you got to remember... He is the first president of the United States. There's never been another president of the U.S. Constitution besides him. So the whole idea of what is he to do, he's going to set the whole standards, the presidents, for everyone to follow, that tradition that we've been talking about. Um, one of the first most important things that he does as president is he only serves two terms. Why that's important is because he doesn't look like a tyrant king. If he continued ruling on you know, year after year after year, term after term, people would just look at him like King George III instead of President George Washington. Another thing that's a big idea this whole chapter is the fact that George Washington only served two terms. That means eight years total. Now, it's not law um, to this point, but George Washington said, you know what, it seems like a good idea. It seems something smart. Um, only because he doesn't get want to look like a tyrant king. Also, George Washington's old. Um, he's in his late 60s, early 70s at this point, and he really doesn't want to continue being president. But I think the most important part was the fact that he sat there going, I don't want to continue ruling because I'm just going to look like a king. Also, Washington thought un unity in our um, political country was very important. He did not like the fact that we have political parties, if Washington came to the United States today, if he was alive, he would be disgusted by the fact that we have Democrats, we have Republicans, we have liberals, we have libertarians. He'd be upset about that. He doesn't think that different ideas or split country was what would make us progress. He thought a country that was united was the best thing ever. So he does not like the fact that political parties will develop. He's against political parties. Also, Washington was very adamant about the United States state. Washington was also um, against alliances with other countries. He didn't like the fact that other countries, um, if they got to war and we were their friends, we would have to jump in, kind of like you guys getting in fights. You guys are going to fight um, and you have a friend, you're expecting them to back you up. We don't have the money to back anyone up. We just want a war. We're in a national debt. We need to rebuild ourselves as a country. So he says, stay away from them with foreign entanglements. But start trading with them. England has a lot of money. We have a lot of resources. We can still make money from them by trading. But don't become their friends with alliances because if they go to war, then we got to go to war. The lesson objective today is going to be that students will be able to identify key points in George Washington's presidency, such as traditions he established and struggles he had. So that's the main objective today. We're going to talk about some of the traditions that George Washington dealt with as president. Um, remember, he's the first one, so he's got to set the standard for everyone else. This is a movie. Um, you can definitely watch it on the PowerPoint slide. It really talks about, um, this is John Adams. He's going to be the first vice president. He wanted to be president at the time. He got uh, he lost the race, so he's now George Washington's vice president. Back then, if you were the first one to, if you came in second place in a presidential election, that meant that you would be the first vice president. So if I was running against, um, you know, let's say, Miss Higuera, and I became in second place, I would be her vice president. So this movie's just talking about the inauguration of George Washington. Here he comes coming in the room. Here he is, a six foot four gentleman, and John Adams who's going to go up next to him, you're going to see there's a huge difference between the height and the stature of how people respect them. Notice how these people are clapping for him. They give him more respect than they did John Adams. Just look at the height difference. That's huge. Who do you want to lead? Someone that's short or someone that's tall? So George Washington just had that natural ability to be a leader in our country. Physically, mentally, 
in every part. So moving on with this real quick. George Washington, you guys don't have to write any of this down, but just really cool, clear to make things clear, George Washington was the only president to ever win with 100% of the votes. Everybody loved him. When we created our constitution, we thought of George Washington. It's important to know that because George Washington will receive every single vote both times. If he wanted to run for a third term, he would easily get it. It was his choice to leave. And that makes him a great man because he knew when to leave. He's also going to set all the traditions for all presidents to follow after him. The fact that he only serves two terms is a big deal. I thought this was very interesting. George Washington never shook hands with people. Because he's the first president, he doesn't want to make his position just normal. He wants to make it a big deal. And so he's not going to shake his hands with everyone. He's going to shake his hands with the most important people, the people of high stature, because he wants to make the presidency a very, very important position. George Washington also designs Washington, D.C. He's one of the first presidents to ever um, not live in Washington, D.C. Uh, the White House was not built at the time. He's married to Martha Washington, very rich, wo uh, rich woman at the time. And he also has no children of his own. The children that he does have are um, ones that Martha had um, in a previous marriage. So here's the electoral map. You can see all the green is the people that voted, the states that voted for Washington. That's the Electoral College. Um, and then the ones who didn't vote, they just didn't have, um, at the time they didn't vote. So New York and um, North Carolina doesn't vote. But he has all the electoral votes to win the election in 1789. This is a picture of Martha Washington. Um, this is her in her later part of the life and then her earlier paintings of her. You can see she's a very rich, prominent woman. She has a lot of money when Washington marries her. Um, she has two children of her own from a previous marriage and Washington took them as his own. This is Washington, D.C. Um, here you have the White House. Um, the White House was actually burnt down in 1812, so this is a revision of it. Um, but Washington actually had a huge input on how he wanted Washington, D.C. to look like. So, first point is Mr. President. One of the first thing I, I want you guys to remember is that George Washington refused to be called Your Highness, His Highness, and anything other than Mr. President. He thought that it was very important to be called Mr. President because he does not want to have that image of a king. Remember, he's the first president of the United States, we are terribly scared of tyranny. He does not want people to think that he's a king. So he wants to be called Mr. President or President Washington. Nothing else, he won't have it. He wants to look like a regular U.S. president. Something very different from a king. Other things that we need to talk about also is the fact that George Washington needs help running this country. One person can't run all those states. So Washington is going to create the first cabinet. John Adams is going to be his vice president. John Adams came in second place in the electoral college or in the presidential race. So he's going to run for, he's going to be the vice president. Congress is also going to create more departments. We're going to have three major ones. The first one is going to be Department of War, which is led by Henry Knox, a buddy of George Washington during the Revolutionary War. We're also going to have Department of Treasury, which is going to be Alexander Hamilton. We've talked about Alexander Hamilton before, um, but he's going to be de um, Department of Treasury. And then the third department is going to be Department of State, which is Thomas Jefferson, TJ. We all know TJ for writing the Declaration of Independence. He's going to be the Department of State. His job is to work with foreign countries. He's going to talk to them. If we get in war, he's going to be a person that has a huge input onto what we do about that. So these are the three cabinet members. And remember, John Adams is vice president. The next part has to do with the first Supreme Court. Remember, the court or the judges are all in the judiciary branch. George Washington is going to create the Supreme Court. How he does that is through the Judiciary Act of 1789. Congress established the first Supreme Court. This is the highest court in our country. All right, There is no other court that is higher than the Supreme Court. Remember those nine members, those, those judges, those nine judges. The leader of those nine judges is going to be John Jay. He is the first chief justice. Um, he is the leader of that group. So you have nine members. The chief justice is the head guy, kind of like a chief in a tribe. 
John Jay is that Chief Justice. Now, I want to talk about Washington's farewell address. There's a lot more that happens in George Washington's presidency. But we have to remember, Washington set the standard for only serving two terms. That's huge. Eight years and that's it. First off, he's old in age. He's done a lot for our country already. Revolutionary War hero. He's also helped with the development of the U.S. Constitution. George Washington is going to leave office. After two terms, this is a president, a tradition that he's going to set for all presidents to follow. Another thing that we need to remember in his farewell address, George Washington tells us, do not make alliances with other countries. Again, if we make an alliance and now we're friends with a country like France and they go to war, we're obliged to go to war. That means that we have to spend our money, our resources, our men. And right now, our country's in debt. We really don't have a lot of men to spend. We really don't have a lot of money to spend. And so that's going to be a lot of resources that we just don't have. So he says, don't make any permanent alliances. Continue trading with those countries, but don't become friends where if they go to war, you have to go to war too. And last but not least, he tells us, do not develop political parties. Our country is stronger as a union. Our country is stronger together. When we were in, under the Articles Confederation, we acted like individuals, and that didn't work. So he says, no political parties, we all act together, and we're just going to be um, one united country, the United States of America.